Parenting with Mary. I'm Mary and today we're making pot roast. There are a lot of pot roast recipes out on the internet and some of them are very complicated and have many, many steps. And so I thought I would show you guys how I make my pot roast. It is super easy. There's really no steps. So I have chuck roast and Chuck roast is a pretty high quality cut of beef compared to some other meats that you might use for pot roast. Um, I feel like if you start with the higher quality meat, then you get a better product. So we're using Chuck roast and we're gonna use our crock pot. I'm just gonna put my Chuck roast in the crock pot. Maybe. And then I'm gonna cover it with beef broth. And then I'm going to let it hang out in the crock pot for at least eight hours. Usually I put it on when I get up and go to work and then when I get home from work, I, it's been about you know 10 or 11 hours. So it usually sits for pretty long on low. You can do this in the Instant Pot, but this works so well that I don't like to mess with it because I know that it will come out perfect every time. So the key is to cover it with the beef broth. Um, I know there's some recipes out there that say don't do that. I also don't put any vegetables in my pot roast. I make vegetables separately. So like I'll make mashed potatoes and gravy when we're done with this, separate. My kids don't really like mushy vegetables, neither do I. So this wasn't quite enough, so I had a couple, little bit more stock here to add. Oops, case we needed it. So completely covered, on low for eight to 10 hours, low and slow. And that's it. So we'll be back in eight to 10 hours. All right, so our pot roast is getting close to done. So we are going to start on our mashed potatoes. The mashed potatoes that I make are very simple, easy, kind of classic, nothing, nothing fancy. But I thought you guys might want to see it. So I'm gonna show you how I cut my potatoes. Um, I don't cut them super small, but I don't cut them really big. Kind of just big chunks. The smaller you cut your potatoes, the faster they will cook. I'm gonna throw all of, my all of these into the boiling water. Be really careful with the boiling water. Um, I have about eight or nine cups of potatoes here. I like to make a lot of potatoes and we use the leftovers for a different meal. I do that a lot when I cook, just like when we're done with the, the chuck roast here, the pot roast. I'm gonna make this into another meal and another video for you guys. So look forward to that. I'm just gonna get all these in. These are gonna cook probably 15 to 20 minutes. I'm gonna let them come up to a boil again and then I'm gonna turn them down so they're just gonna kinda simmer. There's not gonna be a roaring boil going on. You don't wanna overcook your potatoes because they kind of get watery and nobody wants that. So just keep an eye on them. You're gonna wait until you can poke them with a knife or a fork and they're tender. So I'm gonna get all these guys in the pot and I'll come back when they're nice and cooked. My potatoes are all tender and push the knife through very easily without really trying hard. There's little resistance. So I'm gonna drain our potatoes and put them back into our pot. So I'm gonna disappear for just a second here. I like to put the potatoes back into the pot that they were in. No need to make more dishes for yourself. And then we are going to add in a stick of butter. We're gonna let that melt for a second. And I'm gonna put some salt and pepper in. Not a lot of pepper, just a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt. We're gonna be making gravy here in just a second and that will have a lot of flavor to it. So you're just giving it a little bit of flavor here. I don't like to put too much pepper since we are gonna be using the potatoes in another recipe. I don't do a lot of extra flavor in my potatoes. That way it's versatile. But you can definitely put in other other seasoning, garlic powder would be a good one. We're gonna get these mashed with our potato masher. So we're just gonna just go in here. And then I have some milk 
And you're just going to use as much milk as you need. You don't want too milky. So I'm just going to start by getting that butter melted and in, and then we'll just add the milk as we need. Just a little bit to start with. I just use my hand masher. You could definitely use a hand mixer or you know your KitchenAid, whatever you want. This is just the way I always do it. This gives you a little bit more rustic texture. There's still gonna be a little bit of lumps and a little bit more than smooth, creamy. If you were using a mixer, you would get a lot fluffier and creamier mashed potatoes. So it kind of just depends on what you want. Tiny bit more milk in. So we have just a little bit less than a half a cup of milk in right now. And I think that's gonna be perfect. So you're just sort of waiting for them to kind of be creamy and get the majority of the lumps out. So next we're gonna make our um, our gravy. So I'm gonna come back when we're ready for that. We are all ready to make our gravy. So I have butter in my pan and my little pot here, and then I'm going to add in the flour. We're making a roux. About every meal I make uses a roux, right guys? So we're gonna stir our flour together, and then we're gonna add in some seasoning. I'm just gonna start with just pepper. The, we're gonna be using the beef stock that's actually out of the crock pot from where we just cooked our pot roast and that's gonna be a lot of flavor. So I'm really gonna start with not a lot of seasoning. You could definitely add as much seasoning as you'd like, but I like to start small and then you can always add more. You know, if we need to add some seasoning salt or some garlic, we can always add that. You can't take it out though. And each stock you use, I used a different brand this time, a Safe, the Safeway brand. Um, they all have their own seasonings to them, so I don't want to get too crazy before I know if I like it. So we're going to cook our roux here just for a second to get out that floury taste. And then we're going to pour in our chicken or our beef broth. And it comes together really, really fast, guys. So you're really going to have gravy in just a second. This is looking good. You kind of want to cook your roux a little bit longer. We're looking for like a brown gravy. The longer you cook, your roux, the darker the actual flour will get. You're actually cooking the flour, and then that will give us a darker color for our for our gravy. So we're just gonna cook it a little bit longer here, and then I'll serve everything up for us here in just a minute. Our pot roast is done. We'll do the mashed potatoes and gravy. Super easy meal and fast. I mean, this took all day. But this part is really fast. So don't let pot roast scare you. I know a lot of people are worried about pot roast and homemade mashed potatoes. These are almost as quick as instant mashed potatoes once you get everything peeled and then you know what's in them. All right, so we're gonna add our broth in. Just gonna stir really slow. Stir, stir, stir. We're gonna let this come up to a boil, which won't take very long at all because the broth was already hot. And then I'll taste it as soon as it comes down from boiling. And then I'll add any seasoning. I might add some garlic or seasoning salt or more pepper. And then I'm gonna come back in just a second and show you our dish up plate. So I have our plate of pot roast and mashed potatoes with homemade gravy all dish up for you to see. And I wanted to give you a little secret. So with your gravy, if it doesn't taste intense enough, if it doesn't taste like what you're thinking it should taste like, add a little bit of bouillon. So if you're making chicken gravy, use chicken bouillon. We're making beef gravy, we're using beef bouillon. It's just a little secret, just add in like a half a teaspoon, you know, kind of season it as you go, keep tasting it until you get to where you want. Definitely it's a secret to having really good, really kind of full and rich flavored gravy. So here's our dinner. We're gonna have this with a little bit of salad. And I hope that you try our pot roast with our mashed potatoes and homemade gravy. Thanks for spending some quality quarantine cooking time with me.